All right, welcome to class. Um, if you haven't already emailed me your academic integrity commitment form, that's not its real name, that was linked in the, in the syllabus, fill that out, take the quiz, take a picture of it or scan it, email it to Dr. Khan and CC me, and then I'll add that grade for you. If you've already done it, send me an email stating such, and then I'll, I'll um, update the grade entry for that. Any questions on that? I know many of you have done it, but many of you haven't. So um, let me know that. Um, I, I, um, I haven't put a time frame on it yet. Um, I need to, okay? Uh, last Thursday, there was three videos and, and a, a chapter to read. And then there was a quiz that ended yesterday. Any questions? So today we're discussing chapter five. Okay, this, this chapter, so what do you think about this chapter? So this chapter is very different in that this is very hands-on. It was an introduction to a tool. I'm going to go over that today a little. And then the first steps for the projects, the first project that we'll be doing this class, it's going to be based off of chapter six. I'm going to be posting that hopefully today. Um, and so this will be good to see the initial steps. And sometimes it's the beginning of the journey. If you start at the wrong angle, take the first misstep, then you, you can't complete the rest. So that's partly why to, d to do this today, to, so you can see the first steps on, on how to do that. The first step is that you need a Forti client. You need a VPN for CSU. Has anybody already installed Forti client? Okay, I'll send out some instructions. So you need to be going over the VPN, a virtual private network, to be able to connect to these systems, okay? And so we don't want just anybody connecting to them. And, and so that, 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 that's step one, is you need to have a Forti client running. Um, s step two is you need to have some remote desktop. Now I'm running on a Mac, that's no surprise. And so I'm using Microsoft for remote desktop. So use a remote desktop to be able to connect. <clears throat> the IP address we're connecting to is 168.26.205.239. The username is your CSU ID and the password will be emailed to you, okay? That doesn't look like enough, hold on. That's better. Um, my brother for extra security puts a couple backspaces in his password so that there's more characters in there. So you might consider that. That was a joke, by the way, in case. Okay, thank you. Okay, so we do have this issue of the certificate can't be verified. Sorry. Um, and then it brought me in. Oh, this is where I left off. So let me close things. So you are, so remote desktop means we are connecting to a machine somewhere else. Uh, I think this machine is three floors below us. Is probably where it's located, but it, it could be in China, it could be in India, it could be across the world. Um, it, it could be, you know, it, it, under this desk, but it's still, we're connecting to it remotely. And so what we want to do, uh, let's see here. Is we need to go to Microsoft SQL Server 2012. There's a whole host of different um, programs that we can run here. Um, we'll be talking about SQL Server data tools this semester, and we are looking for 
SSMS, SQL Server Management Studio. Is there more acronyms in this class than any of your other classes? Is that a yes? Yes, but I have a question about the footing client console. Yes. Is that the, what you're accessing this through? So what that does is um, that um, changes your internet connection, okay? And so um, to the way I'm accessing this machine is through a program called Remote Desktop. So you would start up Remote Desktop, you'd give it that IP address, you'd give it your username, you'd give it a password of which I will provide you, um, and then um, that lets you onto the machine, okay? Because I've actually been trying to download this through Docker. Is that similar? I don't know, okay? And so now once you're connected to this Windows machine, then go to um, as SQL Server Management Studio, and then we need to connect to a database, okay? And so the server uh, name we want to connect to is CPSC DB. Now, if it's set at Windows Authentication, you need to change it to SQL Server Authentication, okay? And then enter in that same password again to say, hey, I am. Um, um, I want to connect to a database. Okay, we're in. Okay. Now, um, and and uh, yeah. So this should look very familiar to many of you. Who who's used Visual Studio before? Who has not used Visual Studio before? Okay. So if you've used Visual Studio before, this should look very familiar. There's a lot of um, they, they, a lot of code reuse on Microsoft's part, which is a good practice. Um, it's good practice when it's your own company. It's a bad practice when it's somebody else's company. <laughs> That's called illegal. Um, and so you'll see that we'll see that also with SQL Server tools as well. So for this project, what um, what we need to do, pull up the steps again. This is the learn by doing steps. And, um, all right. So then, uh, once we're in here, we, um, can expand the database folder. And I already have one in here, but we would go to a new database. Okay. And we could call the name database name Max Min Manufacturing Data Mart. I'm gonna say two because there's already one. Um and then, um, so is there anything else we need? And then under options here, we're gonna set the recovery. And what this does is it, it changes um, whether it's transactional based and how it handles that. So we're just gonna say, hey, just a simple recovery mode so that it doesn't have to take the time to do all of that. At, on a data load and I just lost the ability to hit OK. There we go. We hit OK. We just created a new database right here. And so then we can select its name and we can go to tables here and we, we want to say OK. We, we have a, a new table and you'll notice there's there's several different windows going on here. We have the Object Explorer window that we've been utilizing that we can expand the database and other things. We have our Object Explorer Details window. We have Properties. Um, and so here, we want to say, oh, hey, this is, 
we want to change the name. We don't want to just use the, the default name. And what we're going to do is we're going to be creating the tables that um, we're going to be using. So the table name to start with is prod the dimensions and dimension product. And then we should enter a description in here. So for this one, it's product dimension populated from the manufacturing automation system export file. We don't need to worry about the, the other items. Okay, and then that, that is the, the property, so that's the name of the database. And so here we're going to enter the column, um, the column name. And so in the in the dimensions product table we have product code, and now we have several choices for data type. So this is how it's going to store it in the database and how it's going to restrict it and what's valid. So as you can see, there's a lot of different options. We're not going to be utilizing all of these. Um, some of these are going to take up more memory than others. Some of them are going to be uh, pro more appropriate for other things. Oh, you got to spell not correctly, but the same. Okay, and then for all of these, we're going to say, "Hey, don't don't worry about allowing nulls." Now, there's one more thing we need to do. Product code is the primary key, and so we can either set it here, set primary key. We can right click here and set primary key. And there's probably two or three other ways you can do it as well because that's how things seem to work. Okay, so we're only, um, and then we would have product name. And for here, it's a name. So what we're gonna do is we want a, a string of characters. So we'll say, okay, oh, 50 characters. No, don't allow for nulls. And now we need a, a product a subtype code. This is gonna be a foreign key, but for this project, don't worry about entering foreign keys because it slows it down on a, a data load. And so this is also going to be an integer. And we don't need to allow for a product, uh, allow for nulls. We need to save it. So hopefully your, your monitor is bigger. Uh-oh. Oh, there we go. Okay. Okay, we need to save it. Oh, there we go. Can we do just 150? So we save it. Notice the asterisk went away. The asterisk indicates, hey, this is modified. You, you want to save it. Now, if we we come here, we, we need to say, hey, refresh. I want you to look again. And in my tables, ah, oh, good, there it is. Okay, the dimensions product. We can see, okay, all the things about it. We can look at the columns and we can see, oh, primary key which is indicated two different ways. And then it's an int, not null. And so this is a, a quick view to be able to get at it. Um, to enter another table, we, we would do new table as well. And um, as with the uh, max min system, there's a lot of tables to enter. And project one is gonna have a snowflake schema. So that means there's even more, sorry. Um, Questions on this? Who is who's done this before? Uh, I have done something close to this, but not in the Microsoft server. Okay. Have you have you used? Yeah, like instead of using the object explorer, I directly have typed the SQL query, like create table table name with the column, the entire SQL query. Okay. That way, I, even I I did use not the. Okay. Good, good. Okay, so, but, but most of you had it, and I, I assume many of the online students have, and many of them haven't, um, is what I would expect. And so that, that, that's to point you in the right direction for project one. Um, and then the other tool 
that we're going to demo today is SQL Server Data Tools. Okay. So we'll be using this this semester as well. And here you can see clearly that it's, uh, it's really Visual Studio. And so when you go, uh, and so this, this is great if you're familiar with this uh, IDE integrated developer environment. Um, it's a full environment. It's been around for many years. Uh, it's, it's a huge project. It has a lot of bells and whistles. Um, and so it has a lot of advantages of being a very mature product um, that is used by thousands. Um, but it also has the ability to do business intelligence. Maybe you've never done that before. And so we can create a new project. My, vi Microsoft Visual Studio organizes everything around projects. So if we wanted to come in and say we're doing a new project, we would click business intelligence. We want analysis services, multi-dimensional and data mining here. And you have the option of having it create its own directory for a solution or not, just depending on how you want to have things organized. Notice the location of where it's going to store it. By default, it's going to put it in your documents directory under Visual Studio 2010 projects. And then if you create a, a directory for solutions, it's going to create a directory under that. And so we can hit OK to create a new uh, project. Um, one of the great things about uh, Visual Studio is it has really good debugging. Debugging is integrated right there uh, as an integrated developer environment. And so you can step through, you can look at things like that. It also has integrated uh, source control, source code management. Um, who's used source code management before? So get uh, SVN, uh, CVS, what? Okay, TFS. Has, has anybody used these others? Oh, okay, let me take a minute to extol the virtues of doing so. Um, how many of you have lost a project midway through working on it? You have? Okay. Almost 99% through. Almost oh! Okay. <laughs> My laptop didn't have like a battery last year, so that happened a lot. <laughs> oh, because power would get pulled and then... Dell issues. <sighs> So my father would often say, when do people, most people buy a burglar alarm system? Anybody know? When do most people sign up for a burglar alarm system? The morning after they got broken into, un un uh, unfortunately, that they have to experience that. And so um, you, can, you can approach uh, source code control from two different ways. You can wait till it's really painful and you wish you had it or you can start now and then when that comes up you can realize wow that was really good I had it. Um, so it, it has many advantages. So um, last semester one of my um, most active children was helping uh, and my his older brother had asked to borrow the laptop I was using for uh, that I use primarily for uh, as a professor and to go in the he was his tr he's, he was eight and he's cleaning the bathroom that was his chore and so he wanted to listen to music online so I thought I'm, I'm gonna encourage him to do his chores so I'll allow him to listen to music in the bathroom right and he's so he was doing that, and he had a little helper that was four at the time, and um, they were, you know, cleaning the mirrors. And so the four-year-old saw the screen and proceeded to spray it with an excessive amount of window cleaner, and the machine turned off. The laptop never turned back on. It died on a Saturday, and so. Um, that was very painful to lose everything. Now, I, I had a backup on Tuesday of which I uh, promptly retrieved and uh, 
used to recover from. So it wasn't nearly as bad as it could have been. Now, now backups and source control are a little different, but one of the virtues of source control is you can put those important files somewhere else in the cloud, another server, somewhere else. And so that when you have a catastrophe, which will happen, <laughs> it will, um, then you can recover from it. You could imagine it's either your project for school, uh, it's tax information, it's your project for work. If you've been working on it for a hundred hours, do you think it merits a little bit of time to spend backing it up? What's your boss going to say if you come in and say, hey, um, I lost that project. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, you got a hundred hours to make up. That's not going to be any fun. Uh, another reason is you might take a project in one um, direction and then you might say, okay, well, I'm gonna, I want to explore this side path. And you might get 20 hours into it and say, uh, no, hold on, let me back up. Or you might have a product and you're releasing it and you're like, well, hold on, we're not quite ready to do that. Let's back up to the previous known version or let's look at the difference. It was working last week when we did, when we uh, checkpoint it, now it's not working. What's the difference between those? And so if you have source control, you could say, okay, well, what did we change? This also works really well if you're gonna work as a team. Many of you will work on projects in a team. I'd submit most. And so this allows people to check out the code and check it in and work on it simultaneously, but have control and recording who checked in what. Okay, and to be able to do that. Uh, do I need to keep going? Or are we gonna look into um, some source control? My source control is Google Drive currently. So. Google Drive, okay, <laughs> so that's more of a backup. Source control will allow you to say, hey, I checked it in on this date. Let me look at a difference between it. And so Google Drive is probably has one copy of it. Is that accurate? So one, one copy, is a backup where source control has multiple versions of your your project your your files okay and so um, backups are good source control has a lot more features and allows you to integrate with the team okay so um, uh, so that was all to say uh, Visual Studio can allow you to integrate with that so you have your programming environment but yet it can connect to a source control. Okay. Alright. Uh, we created a new project. What, what did I want to show you in here? Oh and just one more note on um, s source control is you probably want to do that from the very beginning of your project. Just set it up and then once you've set it up it it's very easy to maintain. So a primary window here in, um, in, uh, in our SQL, um, ah, okay, and in our project here is the Solution Explorer. So this is a, a, a main window here to be able to uh, view a hierarchical view. This will be familiar. If, um, it allows you to feel like a, a file system. The, we have a lot of options with ma managing these windows. As you can see, there's a lot of windows. So if you click on the, the left button and drag it, then it c you can stick it somewhere. And you see the little guide in the middle there. It can tell you, hey, oh, where is it going to be? Are you, are you, are you going to stick it here? Is it docking here? You can have, you can click to the center here and say, hey, I want it to be right here in the middle. I want it to be in the right and, and move it around. Um, hopefully you have a large monitor, at least a second monitor, and you can arrange your windows so you can look at multiple views at a time. But that's a nice feature to be able to arrange things be able to, to look at things. So often this window is more on the right hand side, like more in, in this area is I think where it comes up by default um, to be able to view it. It's got uh, a couple buttons here. 
One is the properties view. So depending on what's selected, you can see the properties. And then this one is show all files. So um, you might want to be able to see all of them. Now, um, corresponding um, is we have the, the, the properties window down here. And so we can uh, have things categorized or we can show them all alphabetically. A lot of people like this because it's like, ah, I don't remember where it is in the category, but I remember its name, so just show that to me. Um, this last one is the property pages. It, do, it only works for things that it's allowed to edit. You'll notice a lot of these are gray, meaning uh, we can't change them, but we'll let you know about them. So, I mean, it's good to know where is this project, what is the uh, ID, what is the name, but it's only when the text is black will it allow you to change it. Okay. Uh, another nice feature here. Is, is the toolbox. The toolbox hangs over here and it, it has the auto hide feature. And so this little push pin, if we push it down, it changes it to being uh, pinned down. Otherwise, if the push pin is on its side, it auto hides so that you can get at it, but that it's not always taking up the real estate on your screen. And so it depends on what you're doing. So the toolbox will have a lot of different options depending on the context of what what you want to do okay um, that's an intro to these tools and so what I want you to do today is see if you, um, let me email you the the password I haven't done this before so it may not work so if it doesn't work send me an email and say hey that didn't work for me let me, let me try uh, we might need to go through some iterations. Log in, exp um, explore, set up a, um, try and connect to the database, create a new project, um, start creating tables, and that'll get you well on your way for project one, okay? So that, that's what I have for today. It's more of a, a demo, get you, and I need you to get familiar with these tools, yes. So um, I, I will send out um, an email how to, to get it, it um, and, and then once you're in, make sure you have the settings and things like that. I will send that out. Thank you for the reminder. Other questions? Do we really need to connect to the remote desktop? Uh, after connecting the VPN, can we just connect the database directly from our computer using Microsoft Server? So, um, I think you can connect it that way, okay? Would you send out um, just a brief description of how you did it? Because that would be a lot easier for, for, uh, for the benefit of other students. Okay, I will try to connect and if I came up with that, I Okay, just, um, you need the password, so I need to provide you with that, but once you have that, okay? Um, this is uh, what the, 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 for the VPN, how many can connect? So you, you have got only one IP address and one box, right? Yes, yeah, so we need to be good stewards and uh, be respectful of other people's projects. Okay? And so we're, we're having a shared environment. Uh, this isn't how a lot of people set it up, but this is for our purposes how we're going to do it. Okay? Good, good questions. Yes? So I need you to create your own within it, yeah. So we, we um, okay. Do you have any naming convention for the DB? Yes, uh, put your last name in it and I'll put that in the instructions. That was a, a very apt question, thank you.